Oh my God. Oh my God. I talk about this stuff and when I when I talk about this stuff and give my opinion based on the things that I'm seeing, I never really expect that I'm going to be proven right. Remember when I told y'all, remember when I said that Donald Trump, and I played the video for y'all and everything, that Donald Trump was in full support of Netanyahu. Remember I told y'all that? And if Donald Trump were to get back into office, Donald Trump said that he would fully support Netanyahu and told Netanyahu that they need to finish the job. And then I came back and I did a video and I said, what will probably end up happening is Donald Trump would work with Netanyahu to redevelop the land and then would negotiate a deal to have a Trump hotel built in the middle of Gaza. I said that. I said that. Y'all can go back in the videos. I said that. Look at this. I'm scrolling over there on Instagram and I come across a post by the Midas Touch Network. Kushner calls for removal of Palestinians from Gaza to build beachfront condos. Trump's son-in-law Jared Kushner said that Israel should move the people out of Gaza and clean it up. Clean it up is redeveloping the land so that they can build beachfront condos on the very valuable potential of Gaza's waterfront property. And so y'all know it doesn't end there for me. I went on over to the Midas Touch website to find out what type of conversation was happening for him to just come out and say this. Here's the article on the Midas Touch website. And in the article, it says that Jerry Kushner Donald Trump's son-in-law, who served as a senior foreign policy advisor during Trump's presidency, and was tasked with crafting a Middle East peace plan, spoke at Harvard University on March 8th, where he praised the potential value of Gaza's waterfront property and suggested that Israel should move the people out while cleaning up the area. During the interview with Harvard's professor, Tarek, Tarek, Tariq, Mossad, Kushner suggested moving Gaza's residents to make way for development. He also proposed relocating civilians from Gaza to the Najeev Desert in southern Israel with a focus on evacuating the city of Rafa. Quote, Gaza's waterfront property could be very valuable if people would focus on building up livelihoods, end quote. He goes on to say, quote, but in addition to that, I would just bulldoze something in the Najeev. I would try to move people in there. I think that's a better option so you can go in and finish the job, end quote. Now, the Midas Touch had a um, had a video linked in that article. I clicked on the video, and this what was the discussion in the video. Refugees, Turkey took them, Europe took them, mm -hmm. Jordan took them. For whatever reason, here in Gaza, there's refugees from the fighting, from an offensive uh, attack that was staged from Gaza. Israel's going in to do, um, you know, a long-term deterrence mission. And it's just, it's unfortunate that nobody's taking the refugees. But also there are real fears on the part of Arabs, and I'm sure you talk to a lot of them, who think once Gazans leave Gaza, Netanyahu's never going to let them back in. Um, maybe, but I'm not sure there's much left of Gaza at this point. So, you know, if you think about even the construct, like, you know, Gaza, Gaza was not really a historical precedent, right? It was the result of, of a war. Right? You had tribes that were in different places, but then Gaza became a thing. 
uh, Egypt you know, used to run it. And then, you know, over time, you had different governments that came in different ways. So you have another war. You know, usually when wars happen, um, you know, borders are changed historically over time. And so my sense is, is I would say, how do we deal with the terror threat that is there so that it cannot be a threat to Israel or to Egypt, right? I think that both sides are spending a fortune on military. I think neither side uh, really wants to have, you know, a terrorist organization enclave right between them. In Gaza's waterfront property, it could be uh, very valuable to, uh, if people would focus on kind of building up, uh, you know, livelihoods. You think about all the money that's gone into this tunnel network and into all the munitions, if that would have gone into education or innovation, uh, what could have been done? And so I think that um, it's a little bit of an unfortunate situation there. But I think from Israel's perspective, I would do my best to move the people out and then clean it up. But I, I don't think that Israel uh, has stated that they don't want the people to move back there afterwards. You know, you, you saw uh, uh, Tom Friedman's column on Tuesday uh, about, uh, 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 you know, where he put forward a plan to get out of this. Biden should recognize the Palestinian Authority unilaterally as a state, and MBS should go to Jerusalem like Egyptian President Anwar Sadat did in 1977, and he should say, I'll normalize with Israel, I'll recognize West Jerusalem as your capital, and I'll even pay to rebuild Gaza if you recognize a Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital. What do you think? Good idea? No, I, I don't think that's a good idea. I think that there's certain elements of it that are correct. I, I think proactively recognizing a Palestinian state would essentially be rewarding an act of terror that was perpetrated to Israel. So it's it's a super bad idea. Sorry about that, y'all. My lawn man is here. He's cleaning up the yard. I'm always shocked when I come out here and give my opinion based on what I've seen and what these people are saying and, and the energy they're giving off. This shocked the hell out of me because I was like, I just said that. If Donald Trump gets into office, he and Bibi Netanyahu will work together to exterminate the rest of the people they will then work to redevelop the land and Donald Trump will negotiate to get a Trump hotel or a Trump tower built right there in the middle of the goings on. And here Jared Kushner is confirming my thoughts. All of you people out there not voting for Joe Biden. All of you people out there that are not voting, period, because you support Palestinians, you're full of shit. All of, all of it is being put in your face. All of it is being put in your face. Mm. I hope you feel good about your choice. I'm not here to try to change your mind. I hope you feel good about your choice. As for me, I will be voting. And I will be voting in the best interests of black people here in the United States and the Palestinians. And oh, Joanne Reed posted this to her Instagram account. And these are photos that have been blown up by Bibi. And it's photos of him shaking hands with Donald Trump and him shaking hands with Vladimir Putin. According to whoever sent her this photo, these were posted all over Israel. This is who Bibi stands with. And you, I'm not voting, and you uncommitted voters, this is what will happen if Donald Trump gets back into the White House.